The geese are back here, they come overhead. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and we're here this week for some plein air painting in late winter during the first week of March. So much has changed over the past week. The temperature has risen, the geese are back around the farm, and the quality of light has definitely shifted and become more intense. Next weekend is gonna be daylight savings time, and I'm especially excited for that because it means that I'm gonna have an extra hour in the afternoon to paint. I work at a school and I get done teaching at about 3.15 every day. It'll definitely be nice to have that extra hour. more geese overhead. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out some of the paintings that I've made over the past week. It seems like everywhere I looked this week, all I could see was warm lights and cool shadows. And so that's what I focused on all week, was capturing a sense of late winter light and shadow in the landscape. All right, let's head right out in the field. Let's set up our easel and have a little fun. We're out here on a sunny afternoon. It's the 2nd of March and we're having a little bit warmer temperatures. I'd say that March is definitely coming in like a lamb. Hopefully March doesn't go out like a lion. I have a sunlit barn this afternoon. It's kind of nice because there's some warm colors. I mean, the barn is red. The silo is a very warm color. It's kind of orange this afternoon. And then that's contrasted by those, those deep and dark shadows that are being cast from the barn and silo. The sky, of course, above the barn is that deep, beautiful blue. I have maybe an hour, two hours to paint this afternoon. We've got some wind. I'm going to put my gloves on because even though it looks pretty sunny out here and I'm sure the temperature is maybe high 30s, it's still pretty cool out this afternoon. Winter still has its grasp on us, but that's no reason not to paint. Let's get started with this plein air painting. but this is kind of the composition that I'm going for with my painting today. I also, I put my composition into an app called No Tanizer. No tan is a Japanese expression for a harmonious relationship of dark and white. I have looked at my photograph in a simplified and posterized version, which is helping me understand the harmony and the relationship of the shapes in this scene. I'm gonna observe the subject matter and start to mix my colors. I've got the big shapes placed in. I have to do a lot more to this painting before it's done. But the heavy lifting is done. The, getting the shapes on the panel is done. And that's always the, the part of it that is the most challenging. I'm going to hand the brushes to you, and you're going to finish this one up. Just kidding, I'll take it from here. I'll finish this one up. I underpainted this piece using thinned ultramarine blue paint. At this point, there's a lot of golden yellows and oranges on the canvas as well. That ultramarine blue was a good color choice in this case because it's the complementary color of all those golden oranges and yellows, which increases the feeling of light and shadow. The sun has set, and I'm using my visual memory to remember what I was seeing to finish this painting off. I love that feeling of chasing down the golden hour light. It seems like I can get a lot done in a short period of time when the light is right. And now it's just a good time wrapping things up. The 
the shadows really move quickly this evening. The things that I do to be able to quickly capture the light is just what you saw, pre-mixing my paint. That takes a lot of the uh, pressure off me to be, oh look, I'm stepping. The mud. Spring is always a wet time of year. I can remember when we had cows out here, the cows would come in for us to milk them and they would be just muddy everywhere, all over the cows. So we'd have to clean off the cows before we would milk them. My dad used to say that it was just a muddy mess down here during this time of year. I guess I'm thankful that I mix muddy colors instead of washing mud off of cows. So alive out here now that some of the animals are starting to come back around with the snow melting and the temperatures rising. So much is changing in the landscape. It's really nice to be able to go out and be able to just set up your easel and create a painting start to finish in one session. That was fun to walk on. All these rapid changes that we're experiencing during the change of season are really oftentimes paintable at that moment only. Impressionism and plein air painting lends itself to the Alla Prima technique, or maybe the Alla Prima technique lends itself to plein air painting, and it makes it possible to paint a painting start to finish in one session. We're down here on the banks of the Baraboo River you can see the river is clear. All the ice has melted off the river. Kind of sad that I missed being out here on the day when the ice was melting because it always creaks and cracks and big chunks break off and they make quite a noise when you're standing out here. The ice is melting and there's more changes happening in my neighborhood as well. There's a couple of barns coming down. It's an owl or a hawk. This week I had the pleasure of painting a, an old barn just down the road from my house and the owner of the barn is a friend of mine Scott he's plowed me out a few times in a pinch so I'm definitely appreciative of that and the first thing he said to me when he saw me painting at his farm was that the barn is coming down I knew that that barn was looking like it was probably standing on its last legs the, jeez, <laughs> I don't really want to fall in the river right now. The owner of that barn originally, the owner of that barn originally, well, as far back as I know anyway, was Milton Kruger. And he was a retired farmer when I was around in my early days. And he would help my dad farm. But Milton was actually deaf and he couldn't, speak. He and my dad had a way of communicating with each other. It wasn't sign language. My dad wasn't able to speak in sign language, but they had a way to communicate with each other and they could share and break down complex ideas on fixing machinery just through kind of nonverbal communication. All right, my camera is telling me I'm getting a little too in depth about my experience with Milton. We'll talk about him again. He's been a big part of my upbringing and uh, Milton's barn is gonna be torn down soon. So this one is extra special to me. But let's cut straight to the painting session over at Milton's old barn. So temperatures are 40 degrees right now. It's very calm and it feels like 40 degrees. I have a great, oh, stay in the car, buddy. Today, I have something great to paint. I have a milk house to paint today. Uh, I'm gonna get to work right away because I don't want that shadow on the snow to change. We've had so much snow this winter and there's just a little bit of it hanging around. This is just down the road from my house and a, a guy named Milton Kruger lived here when I was young. And, and he, was, he was maybe 20, 30 years older than my dad, so he was a retired farmer, but he was always around to help. And Milton passed away about 10 years ago, but every time I drive past this place, I just remember him and the times that we had growing up farming around here. pre-mixing some colors on my palette and I'm hoping to make some process videos where I go over everything that I do while I'm painting. 
but all I can say is that I like to compartmentalize all the different steps of making a painting when I'm getting started. So I pre-mix my colors and then I sketch on the canvas and finally I try to put those colors in the right place on the canvas. Once everything is up on the canvas in the right place, I have something that vaguely resembles my subject matter, and from there, all I have to do is refine it and add a lot more color. Yeah, I told that, but he said, back, if that, we get ready to go, I said, we might have to hunt Kyle down see if there's a, if there's a paint down. <laughs> cool. Kind of focusing on the milk house in this one. I like it. Uh, the nice thing about what you do, uh huh. All the garbage around doesn't have to show up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I am gonna put your dumpster in. Are you? There yeah, you go. I am. Are you? All right, I'll leave it there then. That's the power of editing, you know. <laughs> right, right. Hey, I'm about done with the ski and it's no more. Right. You know, yeah. I, it hurts. Uh, no, you right. know, with, with me, if you know, like the old saying, if it is to be, it's up to me. Yep. You know, no different than you. You go out and break an arm, that could, that could get a little it, ugly. It could. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All of a sudden, could. you're painting left hand. You know? <laughs> Just put the brush in my mouth. I'll be good. Yeah, you got a nice day here. Hey, nice talking. Hey, it's good to see you, Scott. Take uh, care. Yeah. Be good or be good at it. Yeah. In this piece, I didn't do any underpainting using thinned oil paint. The reason being that in the colder weather, that thinned oil paint can be kind of slick on the canvas. And I knew that I wanted to add a lot of color into this painting on top of color that was already there. So having a surface that was not too slick helped me out. Here's the painting so far. I feel like I have a good start. In the foreground, I've got have a lot of the melting snow and there's a bunch of water on the gravel driveway, so that's kind of cool. My job now is to go back through and I have to restate everything that I've painted. So I have to add a whole lot of color shifts into, the, into every area. And so I'm just gonna work now for the next hour or so painting all around the canvas, just enjoying my afternoon working with color. So it took me quite a while to get to this point, but my first placement of shapes was pretty good. Through the years of painting and discovering what process works best for me, I've come to realize that by taking my time at the start and getting things started in a way that is accurate and where I don't have to correct a lot of mistakes seems to be the best way for me to get going. Everybody works differently, but that's what I like to do. Now I'm just coming back in and adding in a lot of the different color shifts that I'm seeing in my subject matter. Adding some of the sunlight in the sky and I'm kind of showing in the upper left hand corner of the roof where the sun is actually shining and cresting over the roof. Well I've been out here a couple hours and I got to have a nice conversation with Scott, the guy who owns the barn right now. Let's take a look at the painting. Here. Well it's hard to take a look at it. It's so sunny outside and because the painting is wet it's really hard to get a good look at it but ooh, maybe right here nice afternoon of painting oh I wish that they were all this nice let me sign my name really quick all right it's official I'm done so it was a nice backlit situation to work on this afternoon when I was in my studio earlier, I was warming myself up for today's painting session by doing a little skateboarding in the studio. I noticed a couple of backlit paintings that kind of were speaking to me today. And I thought that I'd come out and do a backlit scene of my own on this late winter day. I think that when something is backlit like it was today, it just creates uh, great shapes and great contrast. I'm gonna pack my things up and get out of here. Catch up soon.
Well, thanks so much for sticking with me for today's video. We have uploads on my channel every week on Friday. And, ooh, check this out. One last thing before we go. This is really cool. I told you about that. Beaver's Den. And this is that log that I was talking about where the beaver kind of chewed it off in one area and then chewed it off again in another area. Isn't that cool? The beaver just gnawed it off and in two different places. There's another one. Thanks so much for checking in for this week's video. We'll be back soon with the next one.